He's prepared. Yep. That's it. Oh, my goodness. That's the biggest kid in this place, I promise you. Uh, we were getting ready to pray, right? Uh, the band and, and I come together before we uh, have service. And we're getting ready to pray. And I'm like, where's Josh? He's like, he's in there with Kids Rock. What's he doing? He says, you'll see today in service. So I didn't know that was coming. Matter of fact, that's probably one of my most favorite songs, uh, He Reigns. Uh, I tell him every time we all sing it, man, it makes me want to run through a wall. I uh, feel like it's getting ready for a football game or something. But uh, when those kids come up here, man, that added something to it. Uh, to see them not afraid to stand in front of a bunch of you old people and stuff like that, just say, hey, here we are, baby. And I love that about those guys. They are just as raw and just ready to go at all times. Uh, I know we've got a lot of guests here today uh, because of our baptism, and that's, a, that's an awesome thing. And there's probably some of you going... Did they really sing a secular song from Josh Turner at the beginning of this service? Well, last week we sang uh, Boondocks uh, from, from Little Big Town. So, uh, yeah, we do that. Uh, just one of those things. I mean, we, we make sure there's nothing bad in the songs or nothing like that. But we do that just to kind of relax us and say, hey, we're just about as real as it gets. Because you're going to probably listen to that in your car on the way home. So, what's the deal? We can listen to it right here. Uh, the good thing about it is, is, is we do uh, follow it up with some amazing music by, by God and through His Word and through His uh, message. But all of it's done in the spirit of, man, we just love God. We love Christ. We love what He's doing in our life. Uh, there's one thing that I can say about this church, and we say it in, in all of our, um, I guess, the, our tag to this church is we're about as real as it gets. There's not a person in this room that hadn't had troubles, hadn't had failures in their life, hadn't had storms in their life that they've really struggled with, uh, maybe even setbacks in their life. But you know what? No better place to do that than in God's house. Because uh, I got to look in, in the Scripture, and I tried to figure out where in the Bible Christ taught in a church. Can anybody tell me? He did a couple times with the... Uh, Sadducees and, and those guys and he went to them and he said, hey, y'all got this all wrong. Every other time he gathered up a bunch of people or a bunch of people just followed him. One time it was just on a boat. He just uh, pulled a boat up on shore and just sat down and began to talk. The next time it was on the side of a mountain and began to share with people. And here at the Highlands, I want us to always be about the people and not about the building. Because the building used to be a factory that housed t-shirts and everything else and when we first moved into this place there's pictures of garbage bags piled to the rafters in this room full of rats and mice and all the nastiest stuff you can imagine but now it's turned into a sanctuary or a worship center just because of what a man labeled it so what I'm telling you is is we come to this place and we worship a God that is living a God that is real a God that, that has changed lives in an amazing way. And it's not about a building. Because we could do the exact same thing in a dance hall. We have. We have before. So, I mean, the thing about it is, guys, don't forget, you're the church. God's people are the church. And so, that's why we're here this morning, to worship and fellowship together. And uh, the music and, and, and all the fun stuff and, and the... Maybe sitting back going, what are they doing? It's okay. God's in it. He's in it because it's in our heart. And I promise you that. Uh, today I'm going to uh, talk about something that, um, I'll be honest with you, I wanted, I just, I told the man, I said, man, I wanted to go into a sermon series today and, and, and I just couldn't find something I felt like God was leading us in. But I kept struggling with all these things that, that when we have things that come up in our lives that just, Man, they just all, all of a sudden just tear us down. And, and I mean, they, they become a focal point of our life. They become a deal that, I mean, we just keep surrounding ourselves with it. We keep battling it. I mean, it's a fight after fight. Matter of fact, some of it we're really scared of. I mean, there's things in our life that, man, just really scare us to death. And I got to looking in the Bible, and, I, and I'll be honest with you, I've done this message several times. And I've done it a lot of times in front of football teams or, or basketball teams or baseball teams, a lot of athletic events through my FCA stuff, uh, and, and, it's, and we're going to be talking about the, the story of David and Goliath today. But before you go and say, okay, I know that story, I got it, Andy, I understand. Understand it's going to be a little bit deeper than probably what we've done in the Kids Rock area. 
where we know the Bible story of David and Goliath. Uh, this is a little boy. He goes out and he kills a giant. Yay. Yay, Jesus. Boo, devil. All that good stuff. Uh, this is going to be a little bit deeper because you know what? Everybody in this room has a giant. They have a giant that's in their life. This morning, you may have a giant of unemployment, debt, marriage, um, addiction to pornography, addiction to a narcotic or alcoholism. You, ha you may have an addiction of an affair or a relationship that you're in that you shouldn't be in. Everybody in this room has a giant. It may be something as small as not tithing or a callous heart towards a friend or a neighbor or, or someone in this church. The giant is there and it is growing and is battling. And it's almost a fear type deal. And it's a fear type deal is that giant has gotten so big that you really don't know how you can fight it. You don't really know how you can overcome it. And I'll tell you this morning, you can't. You can't overcome it alone. But today, I want us to plug into a source I want to plug into a supernatural, a unbelievable source that can allow us to overcome that giant, to defeat that giant. Not just in a battle, but literally take its head off and it be no more. That's what we're looking for today. But we're not going to be able to do this without Christ and without Him in the middle of this. So why don't we just put Him in it right now. Will you pray with me? God, this morning I pray, Father, right now that you would just anoint me God, that you'll anoint uh, the very words that are coming out of my mouth. God, I pray, Lord, that nobody in this room sees Andy, but they see you. Father, today I know in my own life there's giants. And, and Father, I know in everybody's life that there's giants. I just pray, God, that number one, we admit that right now. God, we come into grips with what that giant is in our life. Father, I pray right now, Lord, that you just begin to work amazingly in our life right now. Father, as your Holy Spirit moves in this place, up and down each aisle, Father. From the oldest Christian in the room to the person that has no relationship with you. God, I pray that your Holy Spirit will move. God, I pray, Lord, that, that today, at the end of this service, at the end of your service, Father, there's people with life change and they, they have a, a way and an understanding of defeating the giant. I pray, God, today that there are giants that are going to fall in this room today. All by your grace and your glory. Father God, I love you and I praise you. In your holy name we pray. Amen. Now we all know the story, and it starts in 1 Samuel uh, 17. We all know the story about uh, David and Goliath. We've heard it as little kids, but I'm going to go through this story just a little bit with you. Uh, and we're going we're to really kind of dig into some, some spots that, that we probably have never really thought about. So let me give you the picture. You've got you to have a, a little bit of an artist-type mind with you this morning. And I want you to paint this picture of two armies massive armies, and they're both on each hillside, and there's a valley that divides them. One side is the Philistine army, and the other side is Israelite army. Now, the Israelites are the good guys, man. They're the ones that, that are selected by God, and man, they, they just love Jesus and all this good stuff, and they are God's chosen people, okay? On the other side are the bad guys, the Oregon Ducks. I mean, excuse me, the uh, 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 Philistine army. Uh, I'm not going to tell you who I'm for in the national championship. But anyway, uh, you know, then when I do this with the, uh, with the football teams, I usually get a kick out of that, you know, because it was always Humboldt was the, the, the godly people and Milan was the devil people, I've been from Humboldt. But anyway, uh, and, and, and so here these guys have showed up, and man, they come together, and basically they're battling over land and rights, and, and, and they're battling over uh, uh, who's going to be supremacist over, over the, the land. So... I think what we, we kind of failed to, to, to miss is we got, you know, okay, you got Goliath. He's a big giant over here. You understand that the Philistines, dude, these guys, they were all giants. The whole army was giants. I mean, this is all defensive linemen across here. I mean, these suckers are huge, okay? Now, on this side, you had the uh, in-shape quick guys, quick for running, running that way. Because they really didn't like the idea of having to battle the big, tall guys, the big, big muscled up guys, okay? And so here they are, and, but they, they, you know, they know they're God's people. They know that, that they are, 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 are centered around this idea of survival, idea of God has got us, He's going to protect us, and we, he, can, he can help us through this. But yet, that's hard to believe, isn't it? 
you got to understand, maybe you don't quite understand and get the full picture of Goliath. Let me talk about Goliath. Goliath was a champion of the Philistines, okay? He was the dude, the bad dude of them all. He was the big cat, big cat on the block, okay? Now, when I say big cat, you may think, well, okay, he's pretty tall. Well, he's beyond pretty tall. He was six cubits, okay, which is just under 10 feet tall. If you want to really know what that is, look at that rafter and look at that floor. There's 10 feet. That's how big Goliath was. Goliath was a, a big, massive guy, and he wasn't a skinny guy either. The Bible says that Goliath was uh, suited in a cloak with bronze shackles on it, okay? And these bronze shackles was basically his big jacket and the thing that guarded his heart and his chest. He also had a bronze helmet. He also had uh, shin guards that were made out of solid bronze to protect his legs when he was in battle. Then he had uh, shackles that were made out of bronze from his forearm up. And so this was all covered. Then he had gloves and stuff that covered with uh, steel or uh, bronze. That's what the main thing that they worked out of back then instead of steel and titanium like we work with today. It was bronze. It was easier to move, and fight, and it was, but it was a very dense metal, so it was kind of heavy. So anyway, kind of heavy. Let's see, what, what is kind of heavy? Well, kind of heavy was is basically uh, what he was carrying around just on his body was just over 650 pounds. Okay, that might not impress all you strong guys out there. 650 pounds is what this man carried on his body. This dude is huge, guys. You've got to be able to understand this. Oh, by the way, the, 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 the uh, actual shield that he was carrying, exactly about a 225-pound shield that he was guarding his body with when he went into war. He also had a spear, and that spear was uh, approximately uh, nine foot long, which basically stood about right here on him, but yet it was tipped with a 35-pound arrowhead on the tip. 35 pounds. Okay, y'all don't look very impressed. So do, are y'all ready to go battle him? Are y'all ready to go up and pick a fight with this cat? All right, I'm not. I carry a gun and I'm still wondering whether or not that's going to do the job. Okay? The thing about it is, is uh, if you really want to look at 35 pounds, and I know some of these guys, uh, Sam and I and, and all the young guys, they, they work out and they go to the gym and stuff. You take a 35-pound dumbbell and you strap it to a pole and you chunk that across the room. It's not going to get very far. Okay? But actually, they said that, that Goliath, being a champion, was very accurate with this weapon of choice. And he could hurl it up to uh, 45 yards at a time. That's 35 pounds, people. Work with me. That is impressive. I'm telling you, this dude is big. This dude is bad. Okay? So we've got this guy over here, and now he has come out, and he has made a challenge to the Israelite army. He's come out and said, all you sissies over there, if just one of you, matter of fact, you can bring two or three. If y'all want to battle me right here in the middle of the valley, if you defeat me, these guys will leave and go away. He says, but if I defeat y'all, it's on, and we're going to come across here, and we're going to take you all. We're going to kill everybody. He said, bring out the challenge. Anybody want to go? Well, now, you know that, that Saul is, is the leader of this army over here, and Saul, you know, be a good guy and stuff. Matter of fact, Saul had the bling-bling on with his... His armor. It was all shined up. I can just see it all tasseled up in red, you know, polished up. And he had it over sitting on the side because he wasn't putting it on. He's like, uh-uh, I ain't going. And he was actually the, the, the strongest of the warriors or, or the, the fighters, the leaders over here. He knew it all. He knew exactly how to defend and do. And he knew all the secret. He took karate and 101, everything. He was pimped up. He was ready. But he knew he didn't want to go fight Goliath. Well, man, we got, we, got a, we got a situation, guys. What in the world are we going to do? Because you understand, this is God's chosen land. This is God's chosen people. And they know that they're God's chosen people. How in the world are they going to defeat a giant that is almost 10 foot tall, that has all these things? And by the way, I hate to tell you, but guess what? Goliath wasn't the biggest of the giants. He was just the baddest. He had four other brothers that were bigger than him. He was the runt of the family. But he whooped all the bigger brothers. That made him champion. So you understand, it's not that just Goliath is 10 foot tall and he's bad. There's other folks behind him that's a lot bigger than that. I imagine these folks were rough on trying to find dates. I mean, really, you know, these things, they are just scrawly looking things. They look like they had big old afros and goatees and had hoops in their ear. Hey, Jeff. <laughs> 